I'm a man. I'm a man. Come on. Uh, I don't have to stay in the outer courts no more. Yeah, come in the inner court. We're a family. Let's, let's, let's smell each other. How you doing? Come on. Thank you. In the room. All right, here we go. Lock it up. Tell them, Brad. Lock it up. <laughs> All right, Father, we just come this morning to celebrate you, Jesus. Just to celebrate your love, how you paid it all, how you bankrupt heaven for us, God. That you sent your son and died for us. That you took away all the sins of the world. Thank you, Jesus, that you took my sin. That's that's amazing. That's miraculous, Lord God. Lord, we just come to celebrate you and worship you as one body and one accord. We thank you for the man of God that's here today, Lord God, and the word that he's bringing. We ask you, Lord Jesus, that you just, Lord, open up his heart. And let the Holy Spirit just flow with him out into the body. That you build up the body and you equip the body for the work of the ministry, Lord. We just pray that this morning. For eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord God. Right now we focus our mind and heart on you and we come to worship you in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. It's on.
I'm going to tell you who you are. Okay? Amen. Great. The, the Lord gave me a word this morning. Uh, if you have it, if anybody has your Bible on your phone or beside you, open up to Matthew chapter 5. Mm. And we, I promise we're going to get into manual, maybe not this morning, might get into it a little bit. Uh, I'm very thankful for this opportunity coming speak. Um, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 3, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. As I read through these, each one of us falls under one of these scriptures. Amen. We may fall under all of them, but we at least fall under one of them, okay? Okay. Amen. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? 
It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. We all fall under those somewhere. Amen. My name's Jory Garnto. I have been in the Lord for 20... Today is my birthday in the Lord. I'm 27 years old. Amen. So, 27 years ago today, I come out from addiction. Amen. I've been an electrician for 34 years, so I'm just like you. I've done industrial, I've done commercial, I've done residential. I hate residential. I that right now. So I could wire houses in my sleep. I don't care to do it. Uh, well, let me do it. Right. But I, I, I've been in construction for, 20, for 34 years. I work for Auburn University now. Uh, I'm an electrician in in-house construction at Auburn. I've been there for seven years. I was in the field for 27 years. And... I've worked with every one of you. Maybe not you personally, but I've worked with every one of you. I've oh. seen the ups and the downs, the addictions, the, the chains, the bondage. I was an alcoholic for 10 years. From the time I was 15 to the time I was 25 when I said yes to Jesus. Amen. I spent nights in the strip club with a wife and two kids at home about to lose everything I had. Uh, on a Thursday night, sitting in the strip club, about 10 o'clock, the Holy Spirit gave me a thought, is this the rest of my life? <laughs> I left the strip club at 10 o'clock. I never left before 2. They closed at 2. Uh, imagine being at the strip club every night till 2 in the morning, having to be on the company van at 5 the next morning. <laughs> Finishing a beer at 2, getting on the van at 5, opening up another beer. This was my life. So, I've been in many of your shoes, okay? So, some people are just good and never have to deal with this stuff. But 27 years ago today, I said yes to Jesus and I've been free ever since. Amen. Never made the cycle. Never looked back. Amen. No man having put in his hands to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. That's what the word says. There's nothing backwards. Amen. The Thursday night, I left the strip club to go. I went to see a friend who introduced me to alcohol when I was 15. He introduced me to Jesus that night. Come on. The same friend. <clears throat> My wife had planned on leaving me the next week. And I didn't know it. She grew up with an alcoholic mother, and she didn't want an alcoholic husband. So, uh, I got saved. I went to a church that following Sunday with my friend. My whole world changed. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost two weeks after that. Come on. Uh, poured myself into the Word of God, and I have not been the same since. Come on. Amen. I've been on fire. For 27 years. Amen. I've seen many men and women come out from bondage. I've seen many lives changed. I've seen many bodies healed. Uh, I've seen cancer disappear. I've seen bones heal. I've seen aches and pains go. Uh, I've seen many things. I've seen lives change. Thank you, Jesus. People that were in the muck and mire come up and be different. So I don't stand up here before you as somebody better than anybody. All right? Uh, Paul said, I became all things to all men that I might win some. So, all this is familiar to me. Come on. <laughs> and I don't miss it at all. <laughs> if I'm being honest with you, I don't work hard no more. Thank God for that. Come on. So, <laughs> a lot of that has to do with my place in the Lord. Amen. So, uh, I can't speak on that. <laughs> so, but I'm telling you, there's rest in the Lord. Yes. Regardless of what the task is at hand throughout the day, there's rest in the Lord. So, 
I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to encourage you this morning. All right. Now, uh, a few weeks ago, Chris was watching me on Facebook, and I had no idea what the Lord was doing at the time. Where is Preston? He doesn't come. Ah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call. Everybody call Preston and badger him for not being here. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right there. That's right there. He'll just say, yes, sir. Right, yeah. And don't do it. So, uh, <laughs> me and Preston go way back. Uh, but a few weeks ago, Chris was happened to catch me on Facebook Live. Uh, I found this message about four years ago. Uh, John G. Lake Ministries out of Plano, Texas. Curry Blake is the overseer of that ministry. I do not follow a man. I follow Jesus. Uh, but the truth that he has learned over 40 years now is a truth I knew when I was young in the Lord. And somewhere over the years, I lost sight of some of this. A lot of wrong teachings, a lot of traditions of men, a lot of... Uh, of uh, a lot of things that have been taught wrong in the church, I saw the truth of those things in this teaching. And Chris has given me an opportunity to bring this to you, and I'm excited about that. Because it's, even though it's called Divine Healing Technician Training, it's really more about being in the fullness of Christ than just healing. But if you can get this concept down, you can walk in the fullness. Well, it comes with it. Amen. Right. Yeah. The fullness comes with it. And whether somebody needs to be healed physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever, it all goes together. Amen. Body, soul, and spirit. Right? That's the whole person, body, soul, and spirit. And we need to be, when we get saved, our spirit man is made completely whole. Come on. All right? There's nothing more to do for the spirit man uh, once you get born again. The spirit man is whole. It's the soul and the body that now the spirit man still needs to be refreshed, still needs to be fed, but it's the body and soul that needs to change, right? Amen. So uh, a lot of uh, uh, people always say it's got to go from, from, from here to here, and that's backwards. This is okay when you get saved. This right here is still jumbled up with a whole lot of mess. Uh -huh. That's why Paul said in Romans 12, uh, 2, uh, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, when you renew your mind to the Word of God, it's easy to walk in the kingdom. Amen. From experience. I poured myself into the Word when I was young in the Lord. I still pour myself into the Word. It's the Word that gives you peace. It gives you life. It gives you rest. So, I want to get into this manual. Y'all help me on time because I have to be at work just like y'all are here. So we're good. So I, I want to say this. Jesus never taught healing. He taught the gospel of the kingdom. Right? And the authority that accompanies the kingdom. He taught union, fellowship, and relationship with God. None of the apostles taught healing. Did they just did it. They wrote epistles that explained our union with God through Jesus Christ. Paul's epistles were written to correct error, and he did that by explaining what Christ accomplished on our behalf. Galatians 6:15 says, "For in Christ Jesus, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything." Uh, Circumcision cannot do anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. So, I'm going to tell you this, and I want you to hear this. I don't know if it's a requirement for you to be here this early in the morning for Bible study, or if you came because you want to grow in God. Either way, it's a divine appointment set up by God. Okay? I, and I know y'all do this every morning, right? Yeah. It is a divine appointment set up by God to grow you in the kingdom. Alright? I'm going to tell you that. That's on my heart. Because I, I know the bucking. I know the resistance. I know the, the fight, the struggle there, the enemy. 
you know, just five more minutes in bed, just five more minutes, just keep hitting that sniff. I know the struggle. Jesus would get up early and go spend time with the Father. So, I'm not here to preach to you, I'm here to teach to you. <laughs> it's been a long time since I preached. I love teaching. So, there's really only two things you need to know about healing. Is healing always God's will? Let me ask that question. Is I am on seven. page three. Okay, well, I, I don't know what it may be in your seven. Yeah, we're on page seven. Okay. Yeah. My manual may be different, maybe an older yeah. manual. So uh, so my question to you is, is healing always God's will? Yes. Yes? yes? Well we didn't know what. Okay. Yes. Yes? yes. I believe so. Alright. Do you do y'all think healing is always God's will? Alright. Uh in Matthew 8, there was a leper that came to Jesus and he said, if you will, Jesus said, I will. Amen. He forever settled his word right there. Yes. If anybody ever says, Lord, if it's your will to heal this one, heal it, they're already wrong. Okay? Amen. Because Jesus settled it. He said, I will. So it is always God's will to heal. Did God command believers to heal the sick? Yes. Or, I'm going to add to this question, or did he just command the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher? Well, that's the Great Commission. You know, to believe. Okay. Comes with it. Okay. I'm telling you, it's a package deal. Yeah, it says believers. God, believers. Your believers. What's not. the Great Commission? Uh, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> Come on. Uh, go and make new disciples. All right. Where's that at in the Bible? I can't tell you that. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Yeah. Hey, Mark Siri. 16. I can ask Siri. So, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's good. At it's least you know. Yeah. Uh, so, if you remove past experiences and teaching that negates the Scriptures, there would be no more hesitation or doubt about healing and deliverance than there is about salvation. It's funny that the early church had no problem with healing. But the church today has a problem with healing. We're quick to get somebody saved, and that's good. That's, that's the greatest miracle there is, right? But in salvation, there's more than just being set free from your bondage. There's, there's physical healing, mental healing. Spiritual healing. So it's on the board behind you. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we've been doing that for like a month. Wow. So so saved. Yep. Yeah. So there's, there's more in that than just being saved, but the church for generations now has emphasized so much on you need to get saved. So you have a day. form of godliness in the ninth power. Right. Which many do today. Right. So. For lack of knowledge. Matthew 28. I'm on the next page. 18th, see, I wasn't going to tell you, all you had to do was turn the Look page. The page. <laughs> uh, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Mark 16, 17, and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Don't go devil hunting. They'll come to you. Alright? People get hung up on this. I want to cast devils out. Let me go find people with devils. They will come to you. Just like they came to Jesus. Ah, uh, I promise you. They shall speak with new tongues. Ah, uh, it's very that tongues is a very controversial thing still in the church today. But there is a prayer language. There's also a gift of tongues. Tongues is very important. Tongues is a prayer language between you and God. Uh, speaking in tongues has a lot of benefits. It builds your immune system. It's been proven by science. Uh, Curry Blake teaches about that. Uh, it 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 builds you up uh, in your spirit. And you can interpret your own tongues. So, 
We're not. That's. I'm, I'm gonna get off that rabbit trail. <laughs> We've been on that one for a while. Six months. Really? Six months. Wow. Yep. I've got a good book for you concerning tongues. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, did. we did it. We figure we're hanging out for eternity so we can take our time. That's yeah. right. Absolutely. Chew on that thing. <laughs> I love it. Verse 18. They shall take up serpents. That does not mean go start a snake handling church. That's, right. That's foolishness. And if they drink any deadly thing, if you want to find a snake handling church, they got plenty of them in Louisiana and Kentucky. So uh, let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. This has nothing at all to do with the vaccine. We're not going down that road either, but I'm telling you, I've heard Christians say, I'm just going to apply this scripture to me when I get the jab and I'll be all right. It has nothing to do with that. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Not if, not maybe, not later, not, you know, not when God, you know, people say, well, you know, it's just not God's time. Yeah, it is God's time. When he took stripes on the back, that was God's time. Yeah. By his stripes, you were healed. Worthy. It's done. It's settled forever, O oh Lord. Your word is settled in heaven. We must settle it on earth. Amen. I'm jumping ahead, but we're going to get there. So, turn with me over to what the Bible says about divine healing. It's page 15 in my manual. Uh, I, I should probably do this. I think I've got the updated manual on my PDF. Uh, and this, you did get this off the website. Uh, yeah, off the PDF. Yeah. Page fifteen. What does it say at the top? I have an important notice. Number one, historical information. Page nineteen. Okay, page nineteen. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready. Uh, actually, go back to page 18. <clears throat> Reasons for failure. Again, there's some things that I'm going to get into down the road, but I can tell you right now that most people base that they most people try to line up their experience mm -hmm. to match the Word of God. But your experience will never change the truth of what the Word of God says. Amen. Grandma was a good praying woman. She loved the Lord. Every day she was in her Bible. She went to church faithfully. And Grandma died of cancer. So it must not be God's will to heal. Right? Uh, because my experience says that Grandma died and she was a good, faithful, godly woman. And she didn't get healed. So we base our we, we take that experience and say, well... God heals some, but some he don't. Uh, that's like saying God saves some and some he don't. Mm. Like, he didn't send his son into the world uh, for everybody, but just for a few. If you, you know, so it's foolishness. But the church teaches that. And it has taught that for years. Uh, it's not God's timing, just waiting on a manifestation. Uh, you got to get the sin out of your life. Uh, you got to break generational curses. N none of this, none of this, is biblical. Everybody Jesus healed were sinners. <clears throat> How do I know? Huh? Right then, like. Yeah. How do I know that? Because he had not gone to the cross yet. Right. Amen. The first person recorded in the Bible that was healed was a heathen king in Genesis. Right. Go look it up. Right. So, uh, you do not have to get the sin out of your life. Now, that's a good thing to get the sin out of your life. But to be healed, if, if sin stops the power of God, then none of us are saved. Because we were all sinners before we got saved. Right? So, uh, there's, there's two reasons for failure. First is in Matthew 17, verses 19 through 20. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could, we, why could not we cast him out? And this is the man brought his boy to him to cast the devil out of the boy that oftentimes throws himself in the fire and the water. Uh, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. 
For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence the yonder place, and it shall be removed. And it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Get that. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing. Alright? That's an absolute word. Nothing. We miss those. All. Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. We, we miss these small words. Well, he didn't heal them all. He, he really didn't heal them all. Just some. No, the Bible says he healed them all. So, uh, the second reason for failure is traditions of men. Mark seven thirteen says, Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such like things do ye. So, there's only two reasons for failure. Unbelief and traditions of men. And as we go through this teaching, we're going to break that. Now, I know, I'm going to tell you something right off the bat here. In Matthew 17, we read 19 through 20. I believe 21 says, And this kind can only go forth by prayer and fasting. He wasn't talking about the devil. Prayer and fasting will not give you any... It will not... It, if, if you think prayer and fasting is going to give you the key to cast the devil out, that's manipulation. It's so, it's it's works. It's, it's works. Yeah. So, is pra- fasting and prayer important? Absolutely. Should Christians fast and pray? Yes. But to think that, well, I didn't fast enough, I didn't pray enough, that's why I couldn't cast the devil out, that's foolishness. But I used to teach that and I used to think that. But I know the truth now. Uh, everything <laughs> what's that it gets us out of the way That's right, right. Yeah. it helps our unbelief right it's, yeah. now it, it right it, it does it, does the Holy Spirit flow better through a clean vessel absolutely prayer and fasting will help you get clean and stay clean so but it, it, it's it's been taught that well you didn't fast enough maybe if I just fasted another day I could have cast that devil out well, maybe if I could have fasted just another year. So now, he's got to stay in bondage for me to go fast and pray for a whole another year, and then I'll come back and try to set him free. Now, he's going to go a whole another year in bondage. Do you see how foolish that sounds? Yes. But it's taught like that. You know? So, uh, if, you are full of, if, if you have been saved, well, even if you hadn't been saved, you can still do the miracles because Jesus said many is going to stand before me. Didn't I do this? Didn't I do that? Jesus is going to say, I didn't know you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Yeah. So, Or you look at before salvation, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, people still moved in faith. They still, right. I mean, right. the Word of God, no matter what, if you believe it, if right. you believe it, it's going to work. It still works. Work. It still works. Yeah. But it works better when you're clean. When you're full of the Spirit, uh, you're in the kingdom, you can set anybody free of whatever they have. Cancer, any other diseases, devils. I've seen devils come out of people uh, many times. Uh, I, I, well, we'll save that for later. Turn over to the next page. Hey, a question. On Go the, ahead. On unbelief, right? Yes, now. sir. It's not my belief. But that person believes that they can't be healed. Their unbelief will stop them from being healed. No, sir. It's you. It's always on the prayer, not the one being uh, faithful. What about Jesus in his own hometown could not heal could many not heal because they're unbelief? And, and, and we're going to get to that. Okay, we'll get to but, that. Okay. But I'll go ahead and tell you right now. Uh, if you'll read it, it'll, it, it says that he did heal some. Now, the ones that weren't healed... Probably didn't come. Exactly. <laughs> Why? And if you read in the Word, because they were offended at Him. Yeah. If any of you get offended at me, you're not going to come to me for prayer. Yeah. So, that's a sacred cow, though. Yeah. And many people say that. Well, even Jesus couldn't heal everybody in His own hometown. Well, read the Scriptures. They were offended at Him. It, it does say that He healed some. Yeah. But you, so, a, a, a overview of the word, like when you go through the word, the woman that touched the hem of his garment and power went out, 
like all those instances where the uh, the blind man Jesus he kept calling out his name I mean there was an expectation of something right yeah. right and and that needs to be us we need to have that expectation that if I walk up to you and you have a need in your body physical need to be healed I already expect it. Yeah. If I lay hands on you, if I take you by the hands and command healing, I expect it to happen right then. And that needs to be us. As children of God, we need to have that expectation that wherever we go, we are the highest authority in that place because we have the Holy Spirit and we can perform miracles. Now, it's not us. It's Christ in us, the hope right. of glory. Okay. But the, the, the question... Uh, again, many people teach that the one I'm praying for, and, and here's, okay, a lot of this has come about because somebody couldn't get somebody else healed. So now, because the minister don't want to, uh, he wants to save face, he don't want to look like a failure, he puts it back on the person he's praying for. Well, you must still have sin in your life. You got to get that sin out of your life, or you got to get that unbelief out of your life, or let's dig into your past and try to see where this came in and close that door. Jesus didn't do any of that. Jesus never had to know anything about their past to heal them. He just spoke the word, or he touched them, or they touched yeah. him, and they were healed. Yeah. Then, then later on, Peter's shadow, right? And Paul's handkerchiefs. I mean, right. we're, we get right. serious later, you know. <laughs> and that, and 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 we'll get into that too later on. That's greater works. Yeah. Jesus said, "The works that I do, shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do." What are greater works? Greater works would be Paul's handkerchiefs and aprons. Jesus never did that. Paul sent them out. Now they touched his garment. So the shadow of the greater work. Jesus never did that. So, uh, but there's there's a lot of things that have been taught, and we always try to put it on back on the person we're praying for, and it's not their fault. If we fail to get somebody healed, there, there's one reason. Uh, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and spoil this for you right in the beginning. It's it, it's in John. It's in John 15, 7. Jesus said, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So, why did I fail to get somebody healed? Because I'm either not abiding in his word, or his word's not abiding in me. And it... it it, of course, it's all by faith, okay? It is by faith, but you still have to have the Word abiding in you, and you have to abide in the Word. Well, faith comes by hearing. Right, yeah. and hearing by the so Word if, of if God. So if something ain't going my way, I need to dig back in. I need to, I need right. to say, hey, whoa, wait a minute, what is, what is the Word really saying? And that's going to faith come by hearing. Right, and, and, and one other thing. Don't, if, okay, if you lay hands on somebody or, or you speak a word of command to somebody, for healing don't take your faith back even if you don't see results immediately something starts to happen Amen. when you release your faith something starts to happen well, one plants one water right God gives the increase. so so reinforce your word you know even if, if you have Jesus had to pray twice for the blind man then there's many other things that Jesus did if they were written down there would not be enough room in the world to contain the books so we don't know how many people Jesus had to pray for twice or three times. You say, well, that's Jesus. He, he was God. No, he emptied himself of everything that had to do with God, and he worked by the same thing that we have to work with today. I feel like sometimes we don't, we don't see the fruit right then unless right. we be prideful. Unless we think, you know, but we want to see the fruit, right? The, the, the ultimate goal is to see immediate results. Right. We want to see yeah. Jesus did. So, you know... Uh, now some were healed as they went, but our our go see we want to destroy the works of the devil, whenever and wherever we encounter them. Wherever we go, but yeah. well, we also right. want to point people toward Jesus. That's right. Too. Yeah. And and okay, so healing is a sign. It's not a reward. The church teaches it that it's a reward. If you're good enough, if you go long enough without sinning, if you do this long enough, you'll get healed. 
they made it a reward. Healing is a sign to point people to Jesus. Jesus the dinner bell. So, right. <laughs> and, that, and that's what these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs, not these rewards. You know what? You got saved. You done good today. Here's a reward. Be healed. That's foolishness. So, uh, I love this. I love participation. I need more participation yeah. out of y'all, and I get out of three people in my living room Thursday. No, not really. They do participate a lot more now. I'm just playing. Oh, no, you on camera? Yeah. 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 I know. You gonna have one person now. <laughs> Down the one. We have to come there. In the beginning, they were real quiet, but they have opened up a lot more. Thank God. I recover. I recover there. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so, look at. Uh, we got a few minutes left. Yes, sir. Um, look at. Look at the next page. Page nineteen is fifty minus fifteen. Uh, what the Bible says about divine healing. I'm gonna go through these and then we'll bring it to a close for the day because you know y'all got to go to work and I got to get to work. So, uh, it says divine healing is the right and responsibility of every Christian. Let me read that again. Divine healing is the right and responsibility of every Christian, not just the pastor, the prophet, the evangelist, uh, the teacher. Uh, I'm sure I missed one, the apostle. Um, it is not just their place to do what Jesus did. We are all called to do what Jesus did. The, the fivefold ministry was put in the church to perfect the saints. Equip them. Yeah, to equip us. Amen. Mm-hmm. So, to do what Jesus did. they are not the special ones. Alright? There is only one special one, and that's Jesus. I am not the man. There was a long time I wanted to be the man. I loved to preach. I loved being up there on the pul- behind the pulpit. I loved shouting. I loved getting people emotional. And the Lord will humble you real quick and make you know that you are not the man. I, I, I preached one time. And, man, I nailed it. It was good. I mean, it was like, man, this, God, this was so good. You know, and, and, and you know that feeling when you do something good. It's like, man, I knocked that out of the park. I did good. And my pastor's coming up to me, and I'm thinking he's fixing to tell me, you know, good job, that was great, and all this. He, he comes up, and he steps in front of me, and he leans in, and he said, uh, get out of your glory and go turn the lights off humbled me real quickly so I am not the man Jesus is the only special one so what I do you can do that's what this training is about we are all called to do the same thing Jesus did we are all called to disciple other people so uh, any hindrance to the healing of any Christian is not of God it's not of God, all right? God is not our problem. He is our help. Any hindrance, again, God is not our problem. God is not holding anything back from you. In Luke, it says, I forget the chapter now, uh, Jesus said, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So God's not holding anything. Every good and perfect gift comes down from heaven from the Father of lights. He's not holding anything back from us. Uh, Any hindrance to healing is on the part of the enemy. Any sickness or disease can be overcome by a Christian if the Christian will exercise faith and power. The enemy is not a serious hindrance and can be overcome by any Christian using the available tools and weapons provided by God. The enemy can only be truly defeated by spiritual weapons and not by carnal, natural weapons devised by man. The only way to defeat the enemy is with spiritual weapons. Christians and non-Christians without faith for healing can be healed when Christians exercise kingdom authority. All sickness and disease is the work of the enemy and is to be defeated whenever and wherever they are encountered. So, I'm going to close it with that.
Uh, is there any questions? And I know a lot of questions will be answered uh, as we go through this, but is there any questions this morning? Anybody? So on, when, you, when you do your outreach, you put it in, in the practice right then. Right, right. You gotta get that. Yeah. And, and that's the, the purpose in this training. That's Preston. The purpose in this training is to teach you how to go out and minister to people. And it, it will not just be a, I, I love the group participation because that makes it more of a team than just me being an orator speaking. I don't want to be that guy. I want, to, I want it to be a team. That's what I'm building on, 30, on, thir, thir, on Thursday nights as a team. Because, again, I'm not the special one. So it will be put into practice. When do you uh, go out, Jory? When, when is that? I, I go out on Saturdays, not, not every Saturdays. But I usually I usually give a week's notice whenever I, I plan on going out, and uh, of course I'll keep Chris in the loop. Okay. And uh, anybody who wants to join me, I go downtown in Columbus. I found is the best place. I got a sign that that says Life Team. It's got my name and number, and it's got free prayer. <laughs> and awesome. I don't take people down. They look at the sign. Most of them do. Many of them will turn their head away from the sign, but. They see free prayer, and they will come to us. So uh, I'm not having to chase nobody down. Uh, people don't want prayer. They just keep walking by. But God has opened up an opportunity, and many people have been set free. I've seen many healings uh, down on the street, down in Columbus. So, But I will keep Chris in the loop. He can let any, you know. The other thing is, once we, we get into this a little more, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and 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 put it out there. Uh, we're gonna practice. We're gonna we're gonna demonstrate and, and put it into practice. And 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 you know whether you need healing or not. You know you stand up and turn to the person next to you and and you know put it in a put a put it into application. Make it real. But so also a lot of my life I, I've, I've got gotten I've seen something and I've wanted it so bad that I was so gung ho that I jumped into it head first not knowing uh, or people are destroyed for lack of knowledge zeal without knowledge right yes yeah. so it's yes he's excited look how excited yeah. he is <laughs> if you keep renewing your mind to the word I'm of God too. balance will come I'm excited so, too let's do this let's pray Father I thank you thank right you now Jesus. for this opportunity I, I thank you for the men that are here uh, I, I thank you, Father, that our hearts and minds have been open to receive your word this morning. And I pray, Father, as we go out through this day, that each one of us will let our light shine and that we'll be Jesus to those people that we encounter today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all this Amen. morning. Thank you, Joy. I have got to get to work. I just have one question. Yes, sir. I'm talking about you. You're free on fashion more. You could have got a job at UGA. You could have got a job at UGA. God, God. You could have, you know. <laughs> so he, he, he told me he, he don't work hard. The more that man ain't worked hard in 34 years. <laughs> hey, I'm not an old fan now. <laughs>